primera vez en la historia que pasa. Eso te dice el nivel de desesperación que tienen en la Casa Blanca, porque no pueden con Venezuela. Todo, todo el apoyo de Rusia en todos los planos. Y nosotros lo recibimos con agrado y mucho agradecimiento. Que le he pedido al presidente Putin que nos mantengamos en conversación permanente. The fact is, what we should have done is we should have asked the rebels when they came to it. We should have said, we'll help you, but we want 50% of your oil. Marcus Conti reporting. Let's talk about Venezuela just a little more because it's so damn interesting. So, is it about oil? Is the, is the problem in Venezuela about money? about oil, about position, about power, U.S. power, U.S. might in the region, or is it about human rights? Is it about taking care of the people, the, Amer the, the, the poor people of Venezuela starving and, and allegedly eating their dogs? What do you think? Well, you heard Trump say in his own words. We're going to hear more from Trump. I got another clip. We'll play the whole clip of uh, Trump describing to you how you destabilize a country and when you bring them to their knees you take 50 percent of their oil by arming the rebels by supporting the rebels we are with you he says for 50 percent of the oil so that's what's, is that the deal in venezuela it sure looks like it so you've got uh, maduro that was uh, the first clip was maduro saying uh that there's no precedence The White House cannot defeat Venezuela, right? That's what he said, right? And he said also that Russia has given 100% support right, against the U.S. So now you have a Cold War, right? You have a war over what? Over oil, over position, over oil. Why is, why is Russia suddenly interested in, in helping Venezuela? They've seen that they watch countries fall all the time, right? Now all of a sudden they're interested, right? Because, because of the... The investment. Come on, come on. Let's let's be real. Right? Let's come on. All right, let's stop for a second. Let's be real. Let's be real. Who? What? What is the motivator? What is the what is the great motivator for corporations? Is it? Uh, it, it does does Cisco, Citgo, or when the, well, that's the Venezuelan oil company. But does Exxon really set out into the globe to to make things right? to, to uh, improve the economies of the world, to, 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 to help the planet not burn a hole in the ozone? Right? Do, plan do corporations really do that? Or are they just, is it about greed? Is it about, is it about profit? Right? Well, economics, if you've studied 10 minutes of economics, you would know that, that corporations are about profit. That's it. That's the only motivator, right? And you just heard Trump the businessman, the quote businessman, who's now dragging us into a confrontation with Russia over oil in Venezuela, right? But all along, his CIA guys, Pompeo and, and uh, Bolton and the rest of them, are all on TV right now saying that it's Mark Rubio, Marco, little, little Marco. They're all saying that it's about humanitarian, we have to help the, we have to help the Venezuelan people, the poor Venezuelan people. And how do they do that? How are they helping? They, they're, they're siding with the, they're, they picked the rebels. They picked Juan Guardo, a CIA plant who was up here in, in DC, right? And now they're going to, they're supporting him financially because they're taking all the oil reserve money, the money that Venezuela, the money that's usually funneled back to the Venezuelan government is not going to the government anymore. It's going to fund the rebels. So the rebels are now funded through the United States with the oil under Venezuela's feet. Right? So the oil money right now right, is funding the rebel, the rebel cause. Wow, Trump's a genius, man. He figured that out all by himself. He's making, he's taking their money and using it against them. Wow, what a fucking genius we got. We got a real genius in, uh, in, in, um, in the White House. So is... Um, So is it about oil? Let's let's find out. You remember Libya? Remember Libya? See, Trump is not talking about. We're going to play some clip. We're going to play a clip about with Trump about uh, about uh, Libya, right? And and we'll find out what he has to say. Now, is it about oil? So, uh, hey Google, uh, what is Libya? According 
to Wikipedia, Libya, officially the state of Libya, is a country in the Maghreb region in North Africa, bordered by the Mediterranean Sea to the north, Egypt to the east, Sudan to the southeast, Chad to the south, Niger to the southwest, Algeria to the west, and Tunisia to the northwest. Mm, so it's in northern, northern, northern Africa, right? Hey Google, does Libya have oil? Here's a summary from the website en.wikipedia.org. Oil reserves in Libya are the largest in Africa and among the 10 largest globally with 46.4 billion barrels as of 2010. The drilling of oil wells in Libya was first authorized by the Petroleum Law of 1955. I mean, does it, is there, do we need more evidence? Oh, let's find out. Uh, hey Google, does Venezuela have oil? According to Wikipedia, Venezuela is one of the world's largest exporters of oil and has the world's largest proven oil reserves at an estimated 296.5 billion barrels as of 2012. Can't make it up, guys. So there you go. So so Libya, it's just coincidental that Libya had these giant oil reserves. And we're going to hear Trump explain the Venezuelan, uh, the, 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 the issue in Libya, and then we'll talk about how it translates to Venezuela almost exactly. So let's listen to Trump. The fact is, what we should have done is we should have asked the rebels when they came to it. We should have said, we'll help you, but we want 50% of your oil. They would have absolutely said, okay, 100%. In fact, they would have said, how about 75%? So, they came to us. They were nothing. They were gone. The war was over. He was taking over. Then all of a sudden, we go in through NATO, which is funded by us largely and which is largely our weapons and our guys, we go in and absolutely decimate this guy. They take over, and now you ask for oil? And isn't it sad? We could have had anything we wanted. We could have had 50 percent of those oil fields. You know, in the old days when you had a war, it's to the victor belong the spoils. So. We could have had something special. When the so-called rebels came to us, we should have said, fellas, we're going to help you. We want 50% of your oil. They would have said, thank you very much. We have a deal. Write it down. Sign it. We have a deal. We would have been a rich nation again. They have tremendous oil reserves in Libya. Okay. so. We're bombing and bombing and bombing. The rebels didn't win this war. We won the war, meaning NATO, which is mostly the United States. We just keep bombing. Every time there's a problem, we bomb the hell out of them, and then the rebels get the credit. Why aren't we getting repaid? Why aren't we taking oil? Why aren't we doing what we should be doing from a common sense standpoint? So we've got to get smart. We've got to run this country right. We're not going to have a lot of other chances. And while we're at it, we've got to get at least paid back. Now, I'd go further than that. I'd say we should get 50 percent of their royal period. If four months ago, when they were being routed and just beaten badly and ready to give up, if we would have said we want 50 percent of the oil, they would have said, absolutely, you have a deal. Help us, help us, please, you have a deal. Help us, help us, help us, you have a deal. Right? Kick them when they're down. Right? That's Trump's philosophy. That's... He, he explained it all. So what did he talk about? He says, 50, ask, for, ask the rebels. For, we would have asked the rebels if, if this was, this is Libya that we're talking about. But if it was, it, now that it's Venezuela, we could see who's calling the shot. Who's calling the shots in Venezuela? It's not Pompeo. It's not Bolton. It's not, it's Trump calling the shot 100%. So here we have it. You just saw Trump's policy on dealing with countries that are on the balls of their ass, that have oil, and what do you do? You arm the rebels. You support the rebels. 50%. Ask for 50%. Ask the rebels. When the rebels come, came to us in Libya, we should have said, rather than deal with NATO, right? He's, he's, he shows you the workaround for NATO. Because if you work through NATO, you don't get, you don't get to steal the oil. Right? All right? We could have had something special, he said. All right to um and the, the most profound thing is like it's almost like a i mean i, I get the way when the left calls trump a hitler because he uses some of the same same lingo the the to the victor belong the spoils uh, that's what he was saying right 
And so, right? So that's, I mean, that's that's very reminiscent of totalitarianism, of of it might makes right. Uh, that's our that's our U.S. policy. Now everybody likes to say, "Oh, uh, Trump is an extension of Reagan." No, you, actually, Reagan overcame the Russian, ended the Cold War, not through might and violence, but actually, and not even sanctions, but through inspiration. Because Reagan, uh, arguably, was the first Hollywood president, and he was able to project an image of uh, uh, apple pie and American. The American way of life, how everybody had three cars in the in the garage, and 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 prosperity in America is what sold uh, the world on the American way. It wasn't it wasn't military might at all, right? and and also the idea of rock and roll, that the the music, the art that we spread across the globe was the inspiration to the rest of the world at the time. Uh, it wasn't military might, but here we have Trump. Uh, Fellas, we're going to help you. We want 50% of your oil. Right? You, you help a lot. The rebels, they're going to start killing people. Right? You think that, the, that the, the military under Maduro, President Maduro, is just you think they're just going to step aside when they have all the guns, they control the armories. Right? You think they're just going to step aside? They're going to they're gonna start killing each other. They're gonna, and if the U.S. steps in with the 5,000 troops in Colombia or whatever they got, or they start bombing, it's going to get ugly and nasty fast we aren't doing what we should be doing from a common sense standpoint that's trump's common sense that we when we have the opportunity when when we bring them down hostile takeover it's wall street's hostile takeover you bring them to their knees and then you say okay well you know we side with your enemy we go find your enemy and say look he's busted he's, he's got a fucking broken leg just lean on him and he'll fall over right and then, and then you say to the rebels, if you do it, we'll give you. We want half of the oil that you steal. All right? right now, you got nothing. Rebels got nothing. Right? Go there, lean on him, knock him down. He's got. We already broke his leg. We, we're sanctioning the high hell out of him. Now, lean on him the rest of the way and, until he falls down. Right? And this is what he says: We got to get smart. We have to. We have to um, run this country the right way. So. If that's if that's the country again, if that's the country you want to live in, uh, if that's the if that's the American policy now, it's all shadowed by our leaders coming out in front of the cameras saying it's about prosperity for the Venezuelan people. They frame it, you know, and you can't escape it. They framed it as a a humanitarian uh, crisis in Venezuela. And that we are the do-gooders. We're going in there when, uh, to save the people. When the whole entire international community sees exactly what it is, right? That's why Europe lines up. Because the United States, if you don't get behind the United States, right? We, we protect everybody, right? We protect everybody. If, if Europe doesn't immediately get behind the, the decision of the United States to overthrow Venezuela, they're not going to get any piece of that oil. They're going to be sh put on the shit list. Uh, and next time they need our help, uh, Trump's going to say, yeah, well, what about Venezuela? Right? That's, that's what they'll do, right? That's what they always do. They compromise and then blackmail, right? And uh, so, I mean, there's the evidence, right? You could do what you want with it, but uh, there's the evidence. There is Trump's policy on, uh, that's his, his thoughts on Venezuela. That was his thoughts on Libya. And is, uh, if you look at the, the, the way it's unfolding with the CIA-led coup in Venezuela, Right now, siding with the rebel, uh, the rebel forces under Juan Guardo to overthrow Maduro, then you would say to yourself, you would come to the conclusion that that is exactly what they're doing. So, my name is Marcus Conti reporting.